about Lucianne Goldberg, who, by the way, we call her a literary agent. Literary is, is the wrong word. She publishes, you know, fairly low-level books, Mark Furman, one about a Clinton, a person who claimed to have an affair with Clinton that, that, that wasn't so. And then she was going to uh, publish a book by the Troopers, which even one of the troopers dropped out of. Say because a, book, a book agent. A, a, uh, right. Uh, okay. But, but, but I think you need a description of Lucy Ann Goldberg. Lucy Ann Goldberg said, tape. Go and tape these. And then some of the tapes were in her possession. So I think she was fueled as much by the, by the prospect of a book or something out of it as she was by getting back at anybody but, uh, who had Kate. questioned her. Go ahead, Kate. I don't believe I could ever tape the conversations of somebody who, who thought themselves to be a friend of mine talking to me. I certainly don't think I could. However, I think the public is less interested in the motivations or past political history of these different people because the tapes, in fact, do exist. And, and, and as we get more details from them, they apparently are credible with respect to the state of mind and emotional position of Monica Lewinsky. I, I think, There's I think nothing I think on the other right. side. Yeah. The, about those people who, who have done the accusing that can justify anything that may have happened on the part of the president. I, I, think, Kate, I think Kate's point is, is a good one. I mean, I, I can't imagine taping a friend either, but I think we're beyond now yes. whether in fact, because the, the, the substance rather yeah. than the source is what's it. I, 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 I think the taping was against the law. I mean, she violated the Maryland state law by that taping, uh, but I think that becomes, a, that she also becomes irrelevant. Of course she's I, I think, I think the, the problem was pointed up by Senator Arlen Specter, who's a former district attorney, pretty smart guy, in which he said that in a criminal proceeding, you don't ever respond until you find out what the prosecution's case is. That's, that's common practice. But this is not a criminal case, as he pointed out. This is a president trying to save his presidency. And I really honestly believe that these lawyers have made a monumental mistake in having this silence. Whatever he said, I think would be better off than just letting Paul Begala and Ann Lewis trash the detractors. I think he has to, he should have said something well, this weekend in his defense. Mickey, they brought back Mickey Canner, they're bringing back uh, Harold Ickes to a limited extent, and Harry Thomason. Uh, that's the sole reason they're bringing those people back. Some of them may be more able than others. Last word, Al Hunt. Next on this special hour-long edition of Capital Gang, did Ken Starr go too far? Welcome back to this special hour edition of Capital Gang. This crisis was triggered when an anti-Clinton literary agent was told by Linda Tripp about Monica Lewinsky's allegations. I said, the only thing I can come up with is to tape your phone conversation. She was very, very reluctant to do that. She did not want to do it. But she did and gave the tapes to Whitewater Independent Counsel Kenneth Starr, who broadened his investigation. Al Hunt. Could the Department of Justice have been trusted to handle this investigation? Mark, my friend Bob Novak has been very consistent in his, his denunciation of the independent counsel uh, statute. I disagree with him. I think there still ought to be an independent counsel, although I think it ought to be curbed significantly from where it is now. I think the problem is with this independent counsel, not with having one. If you're ever going to have an independent counsel, certainly in a case involving the President of the United States, it ought to go to him. I think Janet Reno did the right thing in turning it over to to Ken Starr. I think all those people who criticized Janet Reno over the months as not being independent, I, mean, I would hope they would apologize to her now because she did do the right thing. Ken Starr, however, is a problem. Another issue that's come up, Ken Starr not only was going to file an amicus brief in the Paula Jones case three and a half years ago before he was the, uh, the special counsel, but now Gilbert Davis, Ms. Jones's former lawyer, says he had three consultations with Ken Starr. I think if that's true, Ken Starr ought to be asked about that he perhaps ought to recuse himself from this part of the, uh, of the uh, case. Wasn't he, he was going to file an amicus brief stating his constitutional opinion with, Ru with which Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Stephen Byer agreed with because it was a but unanimous about, Supreme Court how, decision. How about, if he the, can, how about if he consulted three times with him on, on strategy for the case? On a strictly Doesn't legal that question make a about difference? whether or not the president was immune from a civil suit, which in a unanimous Supreme Court took the Ken Starr no. position I'm not that, talking about that the was not the case. I'm talking about the consultation. On that narrow which question. Which Gilbert Davis talked about the other on day. That That's quite different. Question. Now, Ken Starr's involvement in this case, without Ken Starr's involvement, it seems to me, the media could not have covered it the way they're covering it. Um, they used the excuse of possible obstruction of justice and possible burning perjury, which, of course, is what Ken Starr's looking at in order to get at the underlying possible sexual relationship with a young 21-year-old. On the other hand, 
By the same token, if Ken Starr weren't now involved, the president would have had to come out and talk publicly. He's now sort of hiding behind Ken Starr. I can't speak. I'm dying to tell my story, his spokespeople tell us. But because of subpoenas and because of Ken Starr's ongoing investigation, he's unable to. So at the moment, he's being helped in that respect if he's really not able to come out and speak. Margaret Carlson, our attorney on the panel. I mean, tell us, tell us what, I mean, the Ken Starr... Ken and I both. Just, uh, our attorneys, by yeah, the way. That was official right. legal advice I yes. just gave. Yes. Okay, and right. be a charge right. for All right. it. Yeah. Okay, that wasn't free. Okay, um, it was glad you're charging, and we don't want it to be worth what we're paying for it. Yeah. Well, I, I, have, I have read the law. I've never been to law school, but I've yeah. read the law, so I'm sort of an attorney. Just yeah. like Lincoln, you read yes. it at home. Yeah. Yeah. Pro se, I think yeah. we call it. Uh, uh, if I were Ken Starr, I wouldn't want to to have gotten into this area. I would have kept unraveling complicated land deals uh, from, from 20 years ago because now he's known as the prosecutor who wiretapped